And this is a good time to talk about changing your diet, I suppose, the beginning of the year, January. Absolutely. But this is more than trying to lose a little bit of weight. This is something that they say could save lives, could save the planet. This is not a diet for January. This is a diet for life. And it's a kind of evolution of what we've been thinking for a long time. So, for instance, we know that we have a very high protein diet in the UK, but that in Africa they have far too many starchy carbohydrates. So what we're going to do by looking at this whole planet diet is we've got to do our bit, and that will mean cutting down on the protein that we get from eggs, from milk, from meat, and possibly from fish, although you can have about two portions a week, which is probably a little bit more than we eat currently, but increasing what we get from nuts, pulses and beans. OK, talk us through exactly the kind of changes that they're suggesting, the scientists are suggesting we make, because when I was reading, I think it worked out to a bite of a sausage a day. If anybody loves red meat, they're in trouble with this diet. Well, they are, except that you can have 28 grams of uh, chicken, so you could have a couple of portions of chicken a week and maybe one portion of red meat a week. You could have one and a bit eggs a week. I'm not quite sure where the bit comes from. The equivalent <laughs> of about a glass of milk a day, but two ounces of nuts a day and three ounces of protein, very high protein, lentils and so on. They're also making sure that we're getting enough fibre in our diet because a very low carbohydrate diet can may not give us enough fibre so although they've reduced the starchy carbohydrates they're making that up with lots of fruit and vegetables which is really good for us. So we just saw on the screen there that the foods that they're suggesting we have in a day and I have to say it doesn't look like you're going to get enough calories. I'm, I'm not sure also if you're going to get enough protein, whether it could lead to any kind of deficiencies, particularly if you only well, have one, one glass of milk a, a day. I think there are some groups where we need to be a bit careful about that. So, for instance, women who are pregnant, breastfeeding, women after the menopause, they may need more calcium. They may be able to get it from green leafy vegetables. You can get some from there, but they probably need to be a little bit careful. And, for instance, young women may be more prone to anemia. And, ironically, as a nation, we ought to reduce the amount of red meat that we eat, but young women are probably the group who least need to reduce it and they're the ones who are most likely to. So, from what you've read, um, do you think it could work? Because the, the problem here, the fear here, is that we are growing um, mm. as, as, a, as a planet. In terms We're just of growing. Billions of people are expected over the next few decades in terms of more people on the, in this world. Um, would it be enough to really make the changes that we need to make to make sure that all of these people can, can eat and be fed? I think the problem is we've all got to make the changes. And in different countries, they're going to have to make very different changes. Some countries have a huge reliance on fish. They're going to need to reduce that. Most countries don't eat enough pulses and lentils and they're going to need to increase them and nuts so it's going to mean a huge change to the way we eat a huge change to the way we grow food but the idea is that we're not going to run out of water which is a major change we're not going to need to increase farmland and we're not going to increase greenhouse emissions and those have got to be three key features okay so the vegan diet out planet diet in is that what i we're think saying? so I, oh, dr sarah jarvis i just want to try and figure it all but thanks very much thank you